Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. I've got something new to share today, and let me tell you, have I had a lot of people ask me about this in the past week. This is the new um, Miel Yang watercolor set of 36 colors. You may know the Miel Yang name from the fine, pretty excellent watercolors that I've raved about for the past seven years. This is my pick for the best budget watercolor set. And I recently purchased their new, like the new version of this that came in the half pans because I was getting ready to do a class and I wanted to recommend these, but I wanted to make sure the quality was still the, was the same. And they were. So if you get, if you have this older set, that's great. If you have the newer set that comes in the individual half pans, that's great too, because the quality has remained the same over the years in this 36 set. And I just so happy that this is out at such an affordable price. So this tin is roughly around 20 bucks. It can fluctuate. Sometimes it'll go on sale for as low as 17. I paid 24 at like seven years ago. And then I think the regular price that they try to sell it for is like around 26, but it's often usually around $20 on Amazon. So I saw on Instagram that Lee Liang, or Pretty Excellent, or actually the parent company is Paul Rubens, is offering a tube set. And um, I commented, y'all, that's awesome. I'm so glad because I know so many people bought this set and they would love to be able to refill it. And they asked if I would like to have a set to review. So they sent me this to review and I am very thankful for that. And let's take a look at it. So most products that come from Paul Rubens, whether it's their artist grade or student grade, come in beautiful packaging. This is no exception. This is not the chipboard packaging that their uh, Paul Rubens artist quality paints come in though, just to give you a, a heads up. It's, it's a cardboard packaging. It doesn't really matter because the, um, the paints are fine. The paints come in, you know, the paints arrived fine. They were a little bit jumbled up because this, this came in a bag from Amazon and it was, um, uh, you know, this isn't as stiff as the, the chipboard packaging that their other stuff comes in. It has a foam sheet to probably prevent the, the uh, tubes from getting dented. There's a little brochure that tells you what colors are in the different sets. Um, so I guess they have a 24 set. I haven't seen that on American Amazon, but I think you could get it at, like on AliExpress. The 36 set is the one I recommend, and they also have a 48 set. And then the 48 set comes with metallics. I think the, the thir first thir 36 colors should be the same um, as the 36 set, but then there's metallics. And then they recently released a 52 set of half pans, um, which has like pastels and a couple metallics and some kind of convenience colors. I'm still saying the 36 set is the one to go with if you want the most versatility. So I was really thrilled that they came out with tubes for this. Now, uh, the tubes are five mLs, and on the tubes, you're gonna have the color number, which matches the color number from the pan set. I grabbed the pamphlet for my most recent pan set, and the color numbers match perfectly. Um, there was some differencing differences in the last pan set between the brochure and the, um, the paints themselves. The numbers matched, but some of the names were different. And I did not go, I did not look to see if all the names matched between the pan set and this, but the numbers all match. So that's what I'm really going for. Now, if you look on here, we have um, the color name, the color number. It's in English and Chinese. Then we have um, come um, the uh, color carrier, uh, Acacia, well, it's, I don't know what language that's in, but gum Arabic is also from the, is from the Acacia tree. So I'm probably saying that wrong. We get the pigment code, which is PR204, uh, 206, I'm sorry. I need like a magnifier on these because it's kind of small. And um, transparency, all of that. I'm gonna see if they offer the pigment information. I don't see the pigment information on their Amazon listing. Um, so you might need your magnifying glass to read the pigment information if that's what you want to know. But they're five mLs and a five mL tube will generally Fill a half pan twice to the brim, brim if you're drying it down, like in between. So you, you get a, you, I should say you get two half pan equivalents or a full pan equivalent in a 5 ml tube of paint, in my experience. Um, but if you're just kind of topping them off here and there, it's going to last you for a long time. It's, but if you if you were actually drying it down, I would say this, there would be about two half pan equivalents in here. So you're getting twice the amount of paint here than you would in your tin. Um, if you look at the pricing, like I said, this one runs around 20 bucks, even though the list price might be like 26, usually you can be had for about 20 bucks. This is $35, so but this is twice the amount of paint. So just, just wanted to give you that. Um, so what I want to do today is I want to swatch these out and I want to compare and I want to swatch out the 36 set and I want to make sure that they match per color number. And yeah, that's what, that's what we're going to do. Um, I have no doubt these are going to be wonderful, but hey, let's make sure they are before I tell people they're wonderful. Let's actually swatch it out and make sure. And make sure they're the same colors as we have grown to love and um, yeah. 
yeah, then because these are going to be great for refilling your tins. I don't think I'm going to squirt these out in the palette and let them dry down just because I have two of these tins, so I don't really need to set up a third. Uh, but we're just going to make sure everything is copacetic and that you can have my blessing to get these if you want to have them for refills. Or maybe you don't like the tin because you don't like teal. You don't like cute things. You don't want that tin. So you just want the paint. I don't know. You got to live your life. You got to do what's right for you. So um, I'll be back once I prepare a little chart for swatching. All right. I have taken a piece of 9 by 12 paper and I have divided it up into 36 spots. And so what I thought I would do is... Um, Swatch the old color at the bottom here. And then swatch the new color up above it. Right? That's pretty simple. Okay, so that's number three, four, six. I got number three, four, six here. Um, oh, okay, so these tubes are sealed. You see that? It's got like the little um, like uh, aluminum across the top. So, you know what? I'm going to swatch them out. That way, if you buy them and you're like, I'm just going to keep them until I run out, you don't have to go pierce them. I'm wondering about separation, binder separation. I've seen, had that issue with, um, nope, seems to be pretty well mixed. I'm just gonna do a little, gonna stamp a little dot there. Um, I've had that before with Paul Rubin's stuff. Uh, like they're, I'm gonna use, um, you know what I think I might do, because I don't wanna squirt these out like I mentioned, because, But I think I could take the color out of this the area where I pierced it. And I could use that to do my swatch. Oh yeah, that's gonna work fine. That way there's no waste. I'll have all my tubes ready to go. We can see, we'll be able to see when we pierce it if the color's separated or not. I think that looks like the same color. I can actually fade it down a bit because I've got the extra. Yeah, that looks like the same color to me. Sweet. Onward. Okay, the next color we have is 109. I'm thinking I might put these in the box upside down just so I know not to uh, do the same one twice. Uh, 109, we have got this color here. It is called Cadmium Yellow. Beautiful color. Let's look at the tube here. It is... Uh, this is a hue. It's made with PY97 and PY165. Again, we'll have the we'll have to pop the we'll have to pierce the. Oh, I never know if I've got it pierced or not. Oh, I do. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of dab it. Put the cat back on. Well, this is nice though because I can swatch it without having to. Squirt out a bunch, so that looks like the same color to me. Oh, that's pretty. Very nice. I did add quite a bit of water there. Yep, no qualms with that one. Our next, oh, our first, let's tell you what the pigment number on that first one is, probably PY3. Uh, no, the first the first lemon yellow there that we did PY175. All right, so I'll tell you what the pigments are as we go. Um, number 268, orange yellow. I feel like I should do the, the Paul Rubens one first, and then, like, we'll fact check it. We'll fact check it with a pan. Oh, no. Big blob. But you know what? I can just scoop it into my pan. Ah! This is, I have a feeling I'm gonna get messy. Do you, let me know in the comments below. Do you think I'm gonna get messy? I think I am. I have done a really poor job at keeping my dirty water and clean water separate. And I just freshened it before I began today. All right, I'm going to get my swatch from the uh, 268, and then I'm going to scoop the leftover back into my, my palette here. That looks the same to me. All right, we're going to scoop this bad boy up. We don't want to waste. We don't like to waste. Get in that pan. 
can fill the crack, can fill the gap on the side of the pan. Okay, now we have, oh, now what, what was our pigment? It was PY65. I think there's got to be something else in there besides PY65. Because that's awfully orange. Next, we have cadmium orange, PO43 and PY83. I don't, I have like, I have a little like, uh, <laughs> trauma is probably the wrong word, but I have, um, whenever I see these, like, these, uh, oh, that's a pretty color, um, these paint tubes with the, with the little piercers on there, because I've tried, I've had, I've, I've used so much bad paint that had that, oh shoot, I'm going to end up wasting some because that's too much. All right, you know what? Come on, you gotta spread that out better. That's not showing that justice. I usually work from dried down paint. I know, it's like I didn't wanna waste it, but sometimes if you squeeze the sides of the tube, you can get it to just kinda of suck it back in. All right, let's do the The pan version. Again, that looks good to me. Next up is 103. 103 is cadmium red. The pigments are PY, uh, PY65 and PY255. I think that should be PR. So we've got some typo issues. <laughs> We got some typo issues, it looks like, but you know, we've we've been there before. All right, let me see. I'm gonna see if I can swatch with what's on the little piercer without having to take more. And then I can see if I can suck the rest of that back in the tube. If not, I'll put that on top of the pan. Ooh, that's pretty. I used quite a bit of water there. And then this is a twofer because I get to clean off the cap. I feel like I could use a little more, a little more paint in there. All right, let's, uh, can we get that back in there? Nope. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. That one does not look exactly the same. Hmm. Let me, let me hold that up to the it looks. Hmm. Maybe I just don't have enough. You gotta put enough down. Maybe I was being a little stingy. Okay, yeah, it does. I just had too much water. We're gonna, and we're going to put that right, the leftover paint right on top of that pan because I don't like to waste, because you know what, a dot of paint could do a painting. So, you know, that's a pain worth of paint. We don't need to waste that. This is watercolor. All right, this is 686 Vermilion. The pigment is P062. I do not think that is correct. I think we have some issues with the pigment numbering here. I think it's like missing some. And listen, I'm not super critical because these paints are great, but um, I think part of what happens is that these are this is a Chinese company and they're um, it's getting translated, and I just think some stuff gets lost in translation. And I mean, and let's be honest, I do have a little bit of a bias. I have been using these paints for years, and I'm just so thrilled to have. Oh, that's gorgeous! It's like a napfall crimson color. Um, I'm just happy to have a to have a refill. So I do have a bit of a bias. I love this brand of paint, and I like that company a lot. So 
And it's $36 for 36 colors, so I'm not exactly expecting Daniel Smith to pop out of the tube. I'm just going to do a little bit extra dark down here just to make sure I have a, a good representation. And then I'm going to take the color from the pan and spurp it right on over. Both are gorgeous. Both are gorgeous. I like working from dried paints. Do you, what do you, let me know in, your comment, in the comments below. Do you prefer to go from the dried pan or to go, yeah, I'm like when I, when I wipe the, when I wipe the paint onto the pan, I can't tell. I can't tell that it's a different color. It should be the same stuff because these are liquid poured pans. So it really should be the same liquid. I don't think they're trying to pull a fast one, except in their, except for the pigment names, names. And I don't think they're trying to pull a fast one. I just think it's a translation issue. All right, 601, that's Scarlet. The color is PR123. And you know something that occurred to me just now is that maybe if like, there's like, I'm seeing one pigment, it doesn't seem like that's the color. It could be one of the colors. Maybe they're, maybe they're not disclosing multiple pigments because they um, they know that people like single pigment colors. I, I don't know, but I mean, it's plausible. I don't know if I got enough pigment there, but you know what? I'm not seeing any binder separation, which is very encouraging. I don't know if I have enough pigment on that for that one, but. That's a pretty color too. Uh, I couldn't find my new versus old pretty excellent chart that I made. I'm wondering if I might have thrown it away. But there may have been like one or two colors that were just slightly different. I mean, still the same color, but just slightly, just a little bit like between two brands, you'd have the different color. That's kind of how I would describe it, but nothing, we can refer back to that. I probably have a picture of that on my blog actually. Uh, and this is 601 here. Mm. That one seems a little bit cooler and darker. I think that was one of the colors that between the new and the old set. Um, I could go grab my, my newer pans and compare. All right, 205. This is magenta PR... PR206, usually magenta is PR122. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see what we got. This is not as bad as other um, ones where you have to poke the seal, though, I have to say. They don't come all flying out of there. That's a pretty color. That's a vibrant color. Oh, it's like a fresh strawberry, isn't it? Oh, it's gorgeous. I love that. I love the reds in this set. Some people will be like, that's too many reds. Not me though. I love it. Mm, gorgeous coloring. All right, we'll cap this up and we'll get the same color in the pan. Well, let's see, it's a fourth from the end. Don't want to get confused. Yep, that one looks the same to me too. The next color is 206, and that is Deep Magenta PR206 again. Yeah, and that doesn't look like a PR122 to be honest, so. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, pierce the end. Oh my, that one's coming out. But it's been consistent. I haven't seen any, like, I mean, as far as no binder separation, which... Oh, that is very strong. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's almost like um, what you call a permanent alizarin crimson. It'll be interesting to see how it dries down. Well, it should dry down like that. See, a little bit darker. Yeah, like a permanent alizarin crimson. That is gorgeous. I'm glad. I don't want. I don't want to be surprised by anything in this set. I want this set to be consistent and to be like the paints that I know and love. So I'm hoping not to be surprised by anything. 
Yes, that looks the same. And I'm going to just wipe the tip of that um, tube right on that pan set so I don't waste any. And I'll just keep these paints right in their box because I like to teach with this set, so it's going to be a really nice one to have all uh, ready to go in order. Now we have Matter Red. The This is also PR206. They must have got a sale. Must have been a sale on PR206. <laughs> At Paul Rubens. They went to the pigment store. Oof, they got a sale. Okay, that one had a little bubble, a little air bubble type situation going on. So I've got this little I'm trying not to make a huge mess of my tubes because I'm gonna be putting these away. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? That is a beautiful color. All right, that's called Matter Red. I'm not matter at that red color. And let's take it off the pan and see what that looks like. Oh. Oh, that, see, that does not look. Did I get the right color? That one looks different. I'm really going to have to look at the new, um, I'm going to have to look at the new thing. Now I don't want to put that over that pan because that's not going to be the same. Um, let me go grab my newer set and let's swatch out a couple of those colors that seem to be a little different. That one and that one. All right. This is, uh, this is the newer version. Yep. Okay. The newer version matches matches that. So I'm going to blot that off. The newer version is good. Yeah, look at that. Same color. All right, I can donate that to that palette. I guess I should probably just use the newer palette. Um, that would make sense, but I was like, I was hoping just, um, I'm trying to use up this one. <laughs> Oh, it's a never-ending battle. You know what? Let's put that aside, though. Might as well just use the most recent one because that makes more sense. Because if you've ordered it, you've probably, you know, probably more likely a chance you've got the new one. So what was the other one? That one there, it seemed like might have been one that was... Was the fourth one in? Yep, that matches the new one perfectly. I'm just going to paint over that old one. I mean, it was close, but yeah, the newer one matches the tubes better. So if you have the older set, not a big deal, but color uh, 205 and color 003, it's going to be a little bit different. But if you have the sets in the half pans, you're golden. You're fine. Okay, the next one, I'm going to finish off this row, is 502. We've got, let's, I'll, I might as well do, this one is really low. I need to fill that one up, actually, because um, that's one I used in my class, and I used a lot of it up. That color is Rose Red, PV19. Okay, I pierced it and it didn't pop out any color. So, let's see if that's enough. Yeah, the one where I have a huge divot, that's the one that the color didn't uh, explode out of. Not really explode, none of them exploded, but. Ooh, that's pretty, and it looks like just the exact same color. So, hooray, hooray. Probably could take a little bit more. All right, we got the first row swatched. Everything looks good. And I'm going to take a quick break so I can refresh my water because I dipped in the wrong color. And when we come back, we'll keep on swatching and keep on comparing. So something I noticed here in this 103... And 109 a little bit and 268 is a little bit of scaliness in the paint. And I'm going to look back at those three colors because I have a feeling, let's see, 90, that was one of them. That has PO63, PY83, it says. This one, PY65, PY258. Huh, I was just wondering if there might be like um. 
a common pigment that's doing that? PY65? No, it doesn't appear to be. Yeah, there's kind of like a weird scaliness there that I've never noticed in the pan paints before. So that's something we're going to have to keep our eyes out for. Maybe there's some filler in these. Um, or maybe I need to let it dry down and do another swatch from it because I'm definitely seeing a little bit of a of a scale to that paint and I don't really like that. That's that's concerning, but we're going to keep on moving. We're going to keep we're going to keep on keeping on and we're going to we're going to stick with the new paints. Uh, you know let's see. That was this one. I'm going to do a quick little swatch. Yeah, see that seems nice and smooth. And then there was this one. And then it was this one here, which I've used this one a ton, so. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's an awful scaliness. I don't know what's up with that. But we're going to keep our eyes out for stuff like that as we go along. So next one is 544. The color is Violet Red. We can grab the old version first. Or the pan version. This is the new pan version. And now we've got our tube. And I'm using the round one for the tube just because uh, I had a little water there. Um, because the tube is small, I'm just trying to get out without messing too much up. Ooh, that's pretty. I hope these aren't chalky. I will be bummed. And I'm, I'm doing pretty big swatches, so if there are problems, we're going to see it. All right, that's the same color. I'm going to put it right. I'm going to put that right on the pan. Waste not, want not. The next color is... Fresh Purple 398, pigment is PR122, PV23, so magenta and dioxazine violet basically. Oh, and there was a little bit of a bubble, little bloop. And let's see if we have enough from the cap that I can clean off. A little water down. You can really see the dioxazine violet in there. such a strong color and I didn't use much but let's try this one here ooh that's that's way redder let's look at the old version I should leave a little bit more space I guess let's look at the old version of that and see that's also light okay so that is not a match that's not a match. Did I get the wrong color? You I got the wrong color. Let's, um, I don't want to cap that up right yet because I want to find a home for that bubble of paint. Let's try 231. This is just Dioxazine Violet. That color is different. This is definitely less red. <sighs> Where's the other brush? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I can use the same brush. Oh, it's right here. I was just trying to keep a smaller swatch for the old paint so I make sure not to mess them up. And that's a match, so that's good. Oh, and I'm making a mess here. You can go right there and live out your days. And I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit more because I've made a mess. That's also a mess with uh, match with the old one too, so. That one wants to keep on. Oh, I 
I seeing some scaling with that? That is going to be a bummer. I am going to be bummed if I am seeing scaling with those. It's not that I wouldn't recommend it, you know, recommend these refills, but I think I would be like, you know what? Just buy the, uh, just buy the, the original. Uh, you know what? The older one, I think, was closer, so I'm just going to clean that off on the older palette. Put that on the older palette, and then cap this right up. A little bit, that's just a little, it's a little fluctuation. Good to be aware of it, I think, but probably not the biggest deal in the world. Let's see, 679 is Light Sky Blue. PB15 colon 3, that is a Thalo Blue. And why do I have 679? Hmm, what's that going to look like? You know, this looks kind of like a periwinkle color that must have some undisclosed white in it because of how light it is. I'm just going to go like that. I think I have enough. A little bit more. If, if a, if a, Paint brand uses um, like PW4. They don't have to disclose that as a white pigment. It's kind of more also like a extender or a filler. So sometimes that's why you see that's like, oh, it's only listing one pigment and it's PV15 colon three. That should be super super bright blue, but um, but it's not. And honestly, I don't think it really looks like a. It looks more purpley to me than than uh, blue, but the color matches the one from the pan really well. So I think we're I think we're good in that respect. Then we have sky blue. That's number one thirty nine. It says PB fifteen. Oh, that one didn't uh, go too crazy. That's good. I will have to get a little bit out. That should be plenty, I think, though. And let's see how this looks. Just to be expected. A beautiful kind of cyan blue. I don't know if I took out as much as I would from the um, from the pan. Not the color matches, I just went a little bit lighter loading up the pan because I didn't get too much out of the tube. That's a good match. I think that's mislabeled. I think that that's an ultramarine blue. But anyways, I am seeing a granulation there, which is, it's pretty. It's a it's a pretty effect. Less, It's more pretty than the, than the scaling effect I was seeing up there. Our next color is 327 Fresh Blue PB15. This is a, another phthalo blue. Oh, and she's, she's wanting to pop out of there. That's a pretty color. Very strong color. A little bit more water in there. I want to add the water because I want to see, make sure it's mixed up well, and also I want to see if there's going to be any scaling present because, I mean, you got the right to know, right? You got the right to know whether if you've got money to spend, do you want to buy another pan set? Do you want to buy the refills? You have the right to know. I'd say it's a pretty good match. I'm gonna. Wipe the rest off into that pan. That one was one getting low too. I used that one for my class. I did. I took the the six split prim primary colors sap green, yellow ochre, and burnt umber out to do my uh, thirty days to better painting class. All right, one seven nine is cobalt blue. That's PB twenty nine and PW five. So ultramarine blue and white. 
which is pretty common in student grade sets. They don't use real cobalt for both the health reasons and because it's expensive. This should have a little bit of granulation. Might have a little bit of scaliness because of the white. And that's all stuff I would expect. And this with these pigments. It's pretty. I don't have enough to put in a pan, so I'm just going to, uh, enough squirted out to put in a pan, so I'm just going to cap that up. And let's see what this looks like here. 179. Yep, that's a good match. Next up we have 660. That is turkey blue, I believe, or no, this is ultramarine. The, the labels do not match very well, so make sure you look at the um, names when you're doing this. PB29, that's what I would expect, and my ultramarine blue is almost to pan in that set. Ooh, strong. I didn't have much color there, and I still got a pretty good color payout. That's a pretty color. This should have some good granulation on it. Granulation is the kind of texture that you'll see in paint, certain pa mineral pigments as they uh, in large washes as they dry. Get a little more paint there. That looks about the same. Next color is uh, 654. This is turkey blue, which is PB17 and PW6. Hmm, PW6, interesting. There aren't too many companies that use PB17. So whenever I, oh goodness, whenever I see that, it, I kind of uh, make a mental note because I wonder if like they're either being made by the same company or something because sometimes you get a lot of Chinese brands that will make the private label paint. And so sometimes the little telltales of like who's making the paint by, um, by what pigments are being used. Paul Rubens, um, that verbatim art had a PB17 and I kind of wondered if Paul Rubens was making their paints because I'd never heard of them before. It's kind of odd for them to come up with such nice paints right off the bat. So usually they're, if that happens, they're being made by somebody else. Ooh, now that looks darker, but I think it's just a situation of I had more, more pigment from the dried down version. I'm going to add a little bit more from the tube and just, oh uh, yeah. Pretty close. I'd say that maybe leans a little more green, but not enough that I'm not going to put that rest of that paint right there and not waste it. I can already see the granulation in that, the pan color. I got some paint on my fingernail. Next one is Prussian Blue. That is PB27. That's a customary color. We didn't have any over... Um, any blobs? I'm impressed with the no binder separation. Honestly, that's nice because I was concerned about that after using some of the other two paints. That's a lovely color. That looks nice. It's a very bright impression. Probably took a little too much, honestly. Well, let's try some from the pan. I would say that's a match in color. I kind of like the texture of the tube stuff better, uh, just right, right today, but... Oh, man. Getting paint all over myself. Okay. The next color is Payne's Gray. That's a mixture of PB15, which is Thalo Blue, PB29, which is Ultramarine Blue, PBK7, which is um, Ivory Black, I believe. I know just the fact these have those piercing, the caps you have to pierce, will I, that will turn some people off from wanting to try this, this brand. I know that. All right, I don't need that much, so let me see if I can clean out what's on the cap. 
It was not much on the cap, but I can't tell because it's a black cap. This will have probably a little bit of granulation because of the uh, ultramarine blue in it. That's a pretty color. Let's do the, the pan color and see how that looks. I would say pretty darn close. I'm gonna just clear off the top of that tube. You're probably thinking, Lindsay, you were just way too stingy <laughs> with your paint. <laughs> oh, I saw a water drop. That one, I'm surprised I didn't lift that up. All right, the next color, we're actually switching colors here. Yellow green is the next color. I don't know why they put the yellow. Well, I guess it's because it's going into green. Um, this is PG7 and PY3, so Thalo Blue and Hansa Yellow. This is the colors that make up this lovely shade. And I'm cleaning my brush good because I'm going from blue. Going from a dark blue gray color. A little water in that. Kind of an acid lime green. What do they call it? Yellow green. Sometimes it's called May green. All right. Then we'll try the pan. This is riveting, isn't it? That would say pretty close, yeah. There hasn't been anything that's been where I've been like, whoa, that's not the same color. Uh, at most, just a little batch variation that I noticed between pan set one and pan set two. Pan set two seems to match the um, uh, the tubes much better, and it does just seem to be a little bit, um, you know, just a little batch variation. Nothing, nothing to write home about really. Um, concerned about the scaliness on those colors and some of those colors, but it seems to be a yellow thing and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I do not go halfway with my watercolor reviews. You're going to get the real deal. I could add some more water to that. That's, uh, that's acting sluggish. That's acting like it might do that same thing. This is PG36 and PO49. Hmm. Did those colors that scale the PO49 in them? I don't know. It's a pretty color. I like this color a lot. It seems a little gloopy in the tube, but it looks like it's also very luminous. So let's try the pan version, which I know I love because I've used it a ton. And it's almost to the pan, almost to the bottom of the pan. Yep, I would say it's the same. Lovely. Wipe off that right in there. The only reason I'm not refilling these low ones is because I have a whole other set that I want to... I really like to get down to one set of Milan paints. Alright, the next one is 314. This is Hooker's Green. PB15, PO49, PG7. And that's not a color I use very much in either of the sets. I think because I prefer sap green. Yikes, that wants to come out of there. I tend to use sap green or phthalo green. And if I use phthalo green, I, I mix it down with some oranges or yellows to make it a little bit more neutralized. I used to use hooker's green. I used to like that a lot. I used to be, I used to be my preferred green when I was a kid. Except I used to be embarrassed by the name. <laughs> I think that pan hooker's green is a little bit more luminous. Um, and I really don't have room to put that in the new one, so I'll squeeze it. I'll just press it onto the old one. Not my fave, but I like the pan version better than this tube version. Personally, you know what? Maybe I'll just take a little bit of that off the uh, all that fresh paint and mix it out a little bit. Try that again with this brush and see if I get a better. I feel like the pan version's a little bit more blue and a little bit more transparent. 
it's going to be interesting. I'm looking here to see if I see any scaling on any of the other colors. So far, it's just those oranges. So maybe, maybe they need to be dried down. I don't know. That's weird. All right, 312. This is Deep Hooker's Green, PB15, PG7, PY139. No, no. Let's not run away, Cap. I don't have any replacements like you. And, you know, I was doing so good, I'm like, I'm going to save my caps when I use up a tube of paint. And then I'll have, have them in case I lose a cap or cap breaks or whatever. And for the life of me, I cannot remember what I did with those caps that I saved. So it was a good thought. I even did a video about it. Here's my awesome tip. And, uh, I have no idea what I did with mine. <laughs> All right, so let me try... 312 from the pan set. I'd say it's the same. I like the pan set color better just because it seems a little bit more robust. But then again, I mean, there's, you know, I can't exactly call it apples to apples because I haven't squeezed these out, dried them down, and swatched them out. Uh, we're giving her some, right? Uh, 696 Emerald Green PG7. That's our Thalo Green. That's a color that I really like to have because it's very vibrant and it mixes really well. It's very transparent. It's a single pigment green and you can denutralize it with lots of other colors for lots of options. It's just a really good one to have. Did I tell you earlier in this video that Paul Rubens also came out with a tube set for the Show Me, the Show Me paints? Um, and that's a 24 set, but they're 21 ml tubes, so it's more paint. So ml wise you get, it's $36 for those 24 tubes, but there's like 100 ml more paint in that set than in this set. So I just wanted to let you know about that because that might that's going to be a better way to spend your money if you're not like, I need to have these 36 colors. Um, that might be a better a better bet for you. See, it's same same color. I'm still feeling like the the pan set on these greens are a little bit nicer. Four forty seven olive green. That is PY eighty three, PR one hundred one, and PG seven. It's not a color. It's a color I like, but I definitely use the sap green more often. And I thought I heard a little burp from the tube, but it's not going crazy or anything. Ooh, that's pretty. I do like that color. Now I'm looking, I'm seeing almost like a little bit of sediment, but maybe it's just I haven't mixed it out with the water enough. Yeah, I guess that's the case. I thought I was seeing a little sediment, but now I think it looks fine. All right, we're going to try the pan version. So please vote for me for the most boring YouTube video. Nominate me on the, I don't even know, is there <laughs> the boring <laughs> The boring category in the streamies, the the video to fall asleep to. That's fine. Um, I'm seeing almost like a little bit of a sedimentation there. That could be from the PR 101. Though I'm not seeing the sedimentation in the pan version. We'll have to let it dry and really look and and evaluate. But um, I mean they're both pretty colors. I, I'm not complaining. 744 yellow ochre. Oh, that's a good one. PY42. Tried and true PY42. I love yellow ochre. What did that pierce it? Ooh. I guess it did, but I'm going to have to squirt some out. Oh, no. This is the first one I've seen some binder separation. See the kind of see the gum Arabic there? Yeah, so that's a, that's that's the color we've had. You know what? I've had problems with peed their yellow ochres and other ranges of their paints. Their um, their guacai and their um, opaque watercolors had issues with the yellow ochre. Oh, I think I have way too much. Let me try to scrape some of that away so I can spread it out a little bit thinner. It's a pretty color though. Yeah, very lovely, lovely color. I love their yellow ochre. I just don't like how it bursts in the tube sometimes. And it appears to be a good match for the pan, so that's good. Yellow ochre is a pretty cheap color anyway, but I do use a ton of it, so I like having a, having a tube. Uh, 552 Yellow Sienna, or Raw Sienna, PBR7. This is like yellow ochre, but a little bit more transparent. 
sometimes it granulates depending on the brand. Uh, right, let's see. It looks a lot brown in mass tone or out of the tube, but it does have more of that transparent yellow hue when you add water to it. So that's why it looks much different in the pan. It will look almost brown, but when you when you um, add water and you paint with it, it's, you get this beautiful luminous golden yellow color. Very pretty. This one I think will work much better if you dry it down than straight from the tube. I, I have a preference for dried down anyway, but we're all different. I don't know if I would order these just for having these, like, if you're trying to find a tube paint set. I don't know if I would order these in general, but I th but to refill your pan set, I think it's a good it's a good option for that. I mean, we all have a different, we all want different stuff, you know. I can't say what's right for you. It's a great match. That's a really nice match. Well done on that one. Try, try not to get uh, paint on the threads of my tubes because then the, it like cements the, the caps on and I don't want to deal with that. All right, next color is Sienna. That is PR 101. It's kind of like it, the Winsor Newton Burnt Sienna uses that pigment. Okay, I don't have anything coming straight out. I have a feeling we might have some binder separation here. Oh, no, we're good. That's good. I was a little worried about that. So far, we've only had binder separation minimal on one tube. Ooh, that is a gorgeous view, like a redder Burnt Sienna. This is a nice option. This looks a lot like the Verbatim Art Burnt Sienna, too. I'm wondering if Paul Rubens makes their paint. Ooh, that's pretty. Looks like it might granulate. That really looks like it's going to granulate. I might add a little more water to that and see if we can force a little granulation to happen. The difference between granulation and that scaling is more, is mostly just the granulation's pretty and the scaling is not. The scaling looks like, if you've ever had uh, hard water and like around your sink, you get that scaling. That's what I'm talking about there. And let's do a quick swatch of the pan version. Yeah, it's a good match. Moving right along, we have 76. But now they're calling this burnt sienna. So that's sienna and this is burnt sienna. So let's see, this is uh, PY42 and PBR7. So yellow ochre and your typical burnt umber pigment. Or burnt sienna. I like a burnt sienna that's PBR7. Now that didn't have any over squirt from the tube. So I'm just gonna set that back there and dilute it out. It's kind of a pretty chocolatey brown. Looks like it wants to granulate, which is nice. I'm going to add a little, wa little more water to see if we can get that effect. Then we'll go and do a swatch of it from the pan. This is a color that I use quite a bit. I used it in my class, so it's got a really deep dent in it. I think I got a little too much water there. That looks good. Next one, 676 Van Dyke Brown PR101 and PBR7. That should be a pretty mix. I generally prefer a single pigment color just because it gives you more mixing options before it gets dull. But uh, if the color looks good, the color looks good, right? We've oh, got too much water there. Gotta blot my brush off, soak some of that up. That's bold. That's pretty. That's a gorgeous. I like that color a lot. That's really pretty. What was the colors on that? PR101 and PBR7. That's gorgeous. That would be a beautiful, um, a beautiful basic brown. That is a pretty color. It's so rich. All right, and we will swatch that. It doesn't look like much in the pan. I have to say it's got like a matte texture and just looks kind of bland. But man, that's a gorgeous color and it matches the pan. So well done, Paul Rubens. Okay, we got two left. We've got Burned Brown, that is PBR7. Probably kind of like a burnt umber color. Give it a little. These are a little, the earth tones are a little bit stiffer so they're not coming right out of the pan, which is nice. Add a little bit of water 
there to help it flow. That's lovely. PBR7, nice single pigment brown, kind of burnt umber color. <clears throat> Very pretty. Add a little bit more water in there. That way if there's any granulation to be had, it will it'll appear. That's why you want to swatch out your colors because they can look pretty bland in the pan and then when you swatch it out it's like well that's a gorgeous brown. All right that looks like a good match and last but not least or maybe least actually come on it is least. Well we haven't done the white either. That's the other least. Uh, I should give that a little drop of water. Um, PBK7 this is our coal black number 337. I feel like there was just used to be this thing in Maine, maybe on maybe in your on your public television cha channel wherever you live to, called the Great TV Auction, and uh, now on the green board number three three seven. Like they'd have all these different items up for auction, and they were just it was like the driest, most boring thing. I used to watch it to fall asleep when I was a kid because I had an insomnia. But they would do these like fundraising auctions, and that's what this reminds me of. It's a trip for two to Sugarloaf Mountain. <laughs> bid now, bid often. Okay, and then for the pan version, don't expect we're going to see much uh, variation, but eh, the pan one looks like it might be a little bit cooler actually, but I am going to just clean that paint off on the pan. All right, yeah, the, it does seem like the pan version is a little bit cooler in temperature and the black on the tube is a little bit warmer in temperature. All right, and then let's do that white that I forgot to do at the beginning. This is a PW4, so it's a mixing white. It shouldn't be very opaque and overall should be fairly disappointing. So I'm just gonna go like that. <laughs> but if you, like to, if you like to control the viscosity of your paint, if your paint's too runny and you want to make it lighter and control the viscosity, that's when you want a PW4. Uh, or a PW5. Those are your Chinese white or your mixing white. It's um, it's meant to be, it's meant to not really affect the color. That's why they don't have to disclose PW4 when they use it to lighten a color um, or they use it in a paint because it's not really supposed to affect the color so much other, other than just to lighten it. Um, I hope that makes sense. Now let's get the from the pan here. Uh, let's see, I'm just kind of looking at the warmth I think they're pretty close. I was I don't really see a difference in undertone even. Yeah, sometimes titanium white can be like almost bluish undertone. Like that looks like it's a little bit cooler in undertone, but looking at it on the white, I really don't notice a difference. So um, yeah, I don't think there's a noticeable difference in there. So let's take a look at these uh, old versus new. I also have a little swatch of these of the, the original ones that I have and we can bring them over. Uh, so Seeing if I notice any really big differences uh, versus the original set of 36 that came in the molded ice cube tray and the pan version and the tube version. The, the new half pan version and tube version have the, are the same. Uh, yeah, that purple's off. The per the the uh, the old purple, the old what do you call it? Uh, what do they call in that shade? The old um, fresh purple is a, is a, actually no, no, cause that's the, that's the new half pan and this is the old half pan and that's the tube. The tube of fresh purple is more leaning towards dioxazine violet than, um, than the old one. So that's a little bit off. It's a little bit different. Um, yeah, so I think that purple and that red are the only ones you're going to have uh, that aren't going to match when you're looking if you have like the really old set, the set that looks like this. So you get those two colors, that color, that color are not going to be the same. I'm sorry, that color, that color are not going to be the same. And if you have the new version, it seems like that purple is, is different on the new version. Just a little bit. I mean, like batch variation, not a huge deal. But, you know, if you love that color, you use it all the time, you will notice a difference. Other than that, I think that they are good. Um, the only scaling I saw was in that, that, that 103. 
and maybe the 268 and 90. Uh, so I'm not sure what's up with that, but those do, that did seem to have a little bit of that chalkiness to it, but the other colors looked fine. I'm not seeing that in any of the other colors. So I'm giving them um, a nine out of 10 stars, I think. And I, for the price, I mean, honestly, for the price, I really can't fault any of it because it's very good for the price. I think if you let them dry down and you use them, I think they're gonna, they're really gonna be be very similar. Even those ones. I think that that's weird. It's got that scaliness on it, but um, that would be my only, my only cause for concern. So if you were considering buying these, I think that for a dollar a tube, essentially, that's a, that's a good price. That's a fair deal. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy them because I think they're a good product. I, if you're a beginner, I would say go with a pan set. It's cheaper and, um, it's very consistent. And then probably what I would do, honestly, guys, is I would, I would say buy individual tubes of the ones you run out of because the chances of you running out, like if you look at my pan, my set here, look at the colors with big dips and look, a lot of colors have no dips on them. Um, no, keep in mind, I use a bunch of different sets, so it's not really that fair, but there'll be gonna be colors that you just won't use that you'd never need a tube for. So you might, it might be more affordable to take that $36 and buy a few tubes. But then again, you'd only get maybe three tubes of like an artist grade paint. So, I don't know, weigh the pros and cons, do what you want to do, but this, these are decent two, two paints, there's nothing wrong with these, I would recommend them. So just make sure that they are ones you're going to use, because the only supplies that are a waste are the ones that you never open, that you never use. So if you're going to use them, great, if not, then you'll maybe buy individual tubes. Uh, Paul Rubens does not offer individual tubes on Amazon, but I do believe you can find them on AliExpress, but they may be as expensive as your more tried and true legacy brands, just, you know, look for the pigment numbers, look for the, the, um, the, um, customary names of your colors, and you can go from there and buy a single tube if you, you know, just need to replace one tube. But these are there if you want them, and I'll link them down below, because I do think they're a good deal, and yeah, I hope you found that useful. Future Lindsay here. I actually was a little bothered by the scaling effect there, and I was afraid that maybe I didn't give it a fair shot. So what I did was I took the, those three colors and I squirted some onto this mixing area, and I added water to it, just fresh water from my spray bottle to make sure it was it was like not dirty fresh. I was getting completely a um, a fair assessment and really made sure that I had that mixed up with water. So like when you're when you're working from dried down paint, you get a really smooth mix because you, there's no chance of getting any clumps. Everything's gonna be well dispersed with water uh, when you have to add it to dry. So um, I wanted to make sure that that's the situation that I had. And I painted it out on two different papers. I used kind of a typical cold press watercolor paper here. And then I used a hot press watercolor paper here just to see if there's any sort of um, see it on different uh, different textures to see if that I could re reproduce that scaling effect that I was seeing here, which I don't even know if you'll see on camera if it will show up, but I was seeing this little scaling effect on these three colors, mostly in color number 103. So um, let's look at the first one. This is number 268. This was the orange yellow and the pigment used is PY65 on the hot press paper. Really not seeing much for scaling right here on the edges. I'm seeing a little tiny bit, and that could be where there was a standing puddle of water and the paint settled out. Although I did try to go in and pull out any standing water with just like by like uh, wiping my brush off and just setting it in the puddle. Um, on the, and I did the same here, and maybe I could see a little bit of a trace bit of scaling up there, but it's definitely much more smoother where I added a lot more water and I made sure it was really well mixed up instead of just pulling the swatches from the tubes. I just wanted to make sure I was being totally fair. and if that effect came back, I wanted to make sure that you knew about it so you know what you're buying. I think this is a, for a dollar too, I think it's a great buy, but still I want you to know exactly what you're getting because who knows, the price could go up to $70. Well, the way Amazon runs things sometimes, they jack the price up when something gets really popular. So I just wanted, and although I don't see Paul Rubens doing that, they usually keep their prices pretty constant and they rarely raise their prices. So um, I'm not really that concerned with it because it's not a sold by Amazon item, but anyway, um, so less scaling when I added more water, I really made sure it was mixed up and I, and I kind of painted like how I typically would. Um, here, my apologies for the background noise, I just wanted to make sure I added this to the video before I um, edited it. Here in the color cat orange, which is um, 90090, PO43 and PY83 are the colors here. Um, I am seeing a little bit of scaling here, but not as bad as what I was seeing 
Well, actually, I might actually on this one, I might have a little bit more scaling in there, but it's not bad. Um, they're quite smooth on the hot press paper. Of course, where I had more pigments, where I'm seeing more of the issue, but it's not that bad. It wouldn't prevent me from recommending this set, um, but I did want to see what it was going to do on hot press and cold press papers. And yeah, I am, when I look closely, I am seeing a little bit of speckling in there. And then on the color 103, which is uh, cadmium red. Is that really cadmium red? That's very orange for a cadmium red. Anyway, uh, pigment colors are PY65, and it says PY255, but I think I think they mean PR255. Uh, on the hot press paper, I got a very smooth effect, so I'm going to show you my original swatch, which is cellulose paper, just cheapo B from Walmart. Um, I was seeing some white scaling in here that was almost looked like like a hard water deposit that you get on like your stainless steel fixtures if you have hard water in your bathroom. That's kind of what I was seeing here, this white uh, scaling. Does that, I don't even know if that's going to show up necessarily, but that's what it is. Um, and then I didn't see any on the hot press. Maybe I could see a little bit of texture, but that's, it's nothing that I would really be concerned with. Um, I'm seeing less scaling on this red, and that's where I saw the most scaling on the other paper. And maybe a little bit here, but definitely not as bad as what I was seeing in my original squat, my original swatch. So, um, so, so basically my swatch says, yes, there's some, there's scaling on these three colors. Um, but I got less scaling as I did a big swatch of the red and I got more scaling on the yellow on the cold press watercolor paper, but less on the hot press. So I just wanted to put that out there. I had not gotten that, that um, texture with the pan paints. So if those are three colors that you happen to use a lot, um, you may want to purchase some in another brand. Like maybe um, Van Gogh would be a really good one, I think, to uh, to refill your Mili Yang paints. I think the Van, the Van Gogh paint by Royal, Royal Talons is very similar to the Mili Yang. Of course, you're going to pay about uh, 4 or $5 a tube for that, but there are bigger tubes in this. So, um, you know, if you just need a couple tubes, I'd probably suggest you do that if you have $35 to spend. You could get, you know, um, between six and ten tubes of the Van Gogh. But if you do want to have a backup for every color because you use it pretty evenly, then yeah, these are this is a great deal. You're really not going to beat it for a dollar or two. But I did want to be really in the weeds there and uh, and show you where I think there may be an issue. However, the rest of the colors look good, and um, except for that purple not being exact match, that's number three nine eight. Um, the others I didn't really see any issues with, and I think you're, you would enjoy these. Um, but yeah, I know I get a little bit finicky, I get a little bit picky, but it's only because I want to make sure you're buying supplies that you can use because there's so many good ones out there. I love um, these student grade paints. I think they are the best of the budget brands. Um, so may, I was probably being a little harsh on the tubes because I have such a such a preference and a love for this particular set. But, uh, and I do think they're a good buy, but just, I want you to know exactly what you're getting. You can even see on the mixing area here, a little bit of that scaling I was talking about as the paint dries out, this like kind of speckling, almost a salty, like a salty silt look to it. But, um, but yeah, there you have it. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you, let me know if you are buying this set or let me know if you are skipping the set. I'd be really curious to find out. Um, thanks to Paul Rubens for sending me this set of paints to review so I could dig in the, Dig, dig down and give you the, the skinny, uh, and they never mind my honest reviews, which I really appreciate. Um, and until next time, as always, happy crafting. Bye.